<clears throat> Meditation with God radio ministry brought to you each morning at this same time by the generous and uh, loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. The Midwest Church of Christ is located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. We like to extend to you and to your entire family a warm and loving invitation to come and be with us in any and all of the services of the Midwest Church of Christ. Again, located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, again, located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. Our order of services include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. is our first worship of the day. Then at 9.30, we have our uh, Sunday Bible School. And at 10.30, we have our second worship of the, of the day. On Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible study, prayer and devotional services. Our first session is at 10 a.m. in the morning, and our evening session is at 6.50. That's 10 minutes before 7. If you would like to study the Bible in the comforts of your own home, we have two ways that you can do this. One is the Bible correspondence course that you can take by mail. The second is the personal home study where someone will come and sit down with you, study the Word of God right in the comforts of your own home. Either way, you give us a call at 774-3986. And we will register you today. In other announcements, we will be resuming our Sunday schedule this coming um, Sunday, uh, the 24th. Um, we have, uh, made several changes and we'll be, um, uh, uh, doing things, uh, a little different. Um, we will be limited in the numbers, of course, that we'll be able to, uh, come in and uh, have a seat. Um, we'll be, uh, looking for opportunities for, um, uh, Blessing the Lord our God, uh, for we know that our God is able. We will resume our 8.30 worship this coming Sunday. Uh, however, there'll be no Sunday school. Uh, the, uh, we'll be asking the 8.30, uh, several in the 8.30 to help uh, clean, uh, uh, sanitize, is the word I'm looking for. Sanitize uh, for the coming of the 1030 service. So we want to we want to let everybody know, all of our members to know, you will be coming into a facility that has been sanitized for you. And it's our, our means of keeping it that way by issuing you uh, face masks if you don't have one, and gloves, if you do not have some. Uh, we want to want to just everybody to know that uh, <clears throat> we are wanting your safety to be there. And so um, you'll go through a sanitation area, have a, uh, make sure that you have everything you need 
in order for you to worship the Lord our God in, in all confidence. Praise be unto God. Also coming up on March the 30th, that is Saturday, March the 30th, <clears throat> we will be having our graduation celebration. Um, however, it will be outdoors, and we're going to be having uh, at 1 o'clock, we want as many of our members and friends and family members of our 2020 graduates, we would like for you to be with us. Praise God. And uh, at 1 p.m., we'll be out uh, in the parking lot. Uh, and uh, the graduates will march by. Amen. That ought to be, that ought to be a sight for sore eyes. And so we're thankful to God for for that and for our young people and and adults uh, uh, who are graduating. Uh, so this um, the thirtieth um, will be the graduation celebration. So God bless you and let's uh, let's give them. Uh, Two thousand and twenty is a is a rememberable year. Uh, it is the year of the plague. And make sure you understand that God is moving in the plague. He is around. He, God knows how to take the plague and to turn all of us, turn it to our good. Oh, yes, he can. God can do it. There's nothing, nothing too hard for the Lord. And so we are thankful to God for uh, for you, and let's let's give a great time. Let's have a great time in the Lord our God, for He and He alone can provide all the good we need. We want to now remember our sick and shut in. Remember, uh, Sister. Uh, uh, Linda Bird, Sister Jacqueline Holman, uh, Sister Linda Brano, that is, Sister Clarice Floyd Johnson, Sister Emma Johnson, Sister Anya Lawson, uh, Sister Olivia Hanley, Sister Crystal Knight, Sister Don Marie Sizemore, Sister Jaquay. Thomas, let's keep these in our prayers and ask God to be with them. Also, our shut-in, Sister Louise Covington, Sister Sarah Cowan, Sister Mary Hunter, Sister Pearl, uh, Sister Savannah Johnson, Sister Opal Pace, Sister Pearl Smith, and uh, uh, Sister Mary uh, Wood, pray also for Brother James Frazier um, and remember Sister Bertha Frazier. Keep her in your prayers. We want to Remember those who are going through dialysis, radiation, chemotherapy, uh, and all other forms of, uh, of treatments. Remember our dear friends, Sister Angela Walls Gill, Sister Sheila Heiner, Sister Sandy Hammond Schuler, Sister Rita Kamishi, uh, Sister Sarah, the daughter of brother and sister Clark. Um, Standard, uh, Sister Beverly Bledsoe, Sister Anya Lawson, Sister Latonya Johnson, pray for Brothers Jasper Crenshaw, Brother Richard Rose, Brother Gary King, Brother Frederick Hines, and Brother Marvin Stevenson 
Jr. Praise be unto God. Amen, amen, amen. There are many that yesterday who asked for prayer. We had so many yesterday calling up a prayer and was with us in our service on yesterday. And Brother John Poo Malone did a wonderful, wonderful job on yesterday. And all oh, our hearts were warmed with the goodness of God. And may our God be, may our God be with you. We want to um, pray, give up, send up prayers. Uh, for Sister um, Felicia Bass, praying for her sister, Crystal Knight, who has been placed in the hospital, and uh, <clears throat> uh, Leo Coleman, uh, amen, want to pray for them. Also, we want to pray for our brother Howard Jones, who asks for prayer for his family. And that he will keep uh, his faith firmly in God's will. Uh, Sister Joyce Osborne, a uh, prayer for the uh, uh, Clay uh, Bonnie uh, family. Sister Rita Greer, please continue to pray for her family her cousin Kevin, and uh, Sister Olivia Hanley, uh, who is out of the hospital, but she is recuperating at home. So let's keep her in our prayers. Sister Linda uh, Brano will be having surgery, uh, medical procedure done this Wednesday uh, and asking for special prayer. Sister Anda Sharp, Prayer for her and her family. Sister Marilyn Wester is asking for prayer for the uh, Denise Guest, who is very, very sick. Uh, uh, Brother James Fowler is asking for prayer for his family and his and for Sister Hunter. Sister Angela uh, Angelica Robertson is asking for prayer. For a colony, uh, who, amen, and may God bless her. She had a birthday. May our God be uh, with her. Amen, amen, amen. Um, we'll give others uh, later on, but these were those who asked for prayer on yesterday, and there were many, many others, and we'll get to those. Um want to give thanks to those who supported the radio ministry this week. want to say thank you to Brother James Malone, uh, to Sister Angelica Robertson, Sister Felicia Stevenson, uh, Brother Joe Stevenson, Sister Joey Stevenson, Brother Kevin Stevenson, Sister Carmen Swain, Sister Rose Mary Thompson, and our dear friends, Brother David and Sister Rita Kamishi. Thank you all for your generosity and love towards this ministry. Would you bow with me? Dear God and Father, as we come before you today, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, our God, may you, may you be with us and uh, show us the way that we need to go and travel this day. Put us under your wings. Let us, let us ride your wings of glory to the places you would have us to be and go where you would want us to go. Lord, there is no other God 
besides you. We can make no image of anything or anybody that can look like you. Oh Lord, we, we will not never take your name in vain because your name is holy and reverent is your name. You has given your son a name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Oh Lord, be with our sick. I shut in those that are asking for special prayer. Oh God, be with us. Enter into our hearts now as we are ready to open up your word that your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light in our path. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise be unto God. Now let's open up our Bibles to the book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible, the word of God says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but is the light is in the law of the Lord, and it is in his law that he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in this season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us, show his disciples the way in the New Testament. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 3, the Bible, the word of God said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. They shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after <clears throat> righteousness. For they shall be filled. <clears throat> blessed are the merciful They shall receive mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye Men shall revile you and persecute you, and they shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, he says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great 
is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Now let's open your Bibles to the book of John, the 19th chapter, and the verse is 25. The Bible, the Word of God says, Standing by the cross of Jesus, where his mother, his mother's sister, his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clophis, and Mary Magdalene. Monday, May the 18th, 2020. Our daily devotion entitled The Cost to Others. There is no Christianity without a cross. For you cannot be a disciple of Jesus without taking up your cross. Crosses are painful. They forever change your life. But sometimes the greatest cost will not be to you, but to those you love. You may be prepared to obey the Lord's commands, whatever they are, because you're, you have walked with him and know that his way is the best way for you to travel. Yet there will be those close to you who have not related to Jesus in the same way. And they have not heard his voice clearly as you have. Jesus understood. He understood that his father's will for him led him to the cross. The cross would mean a painful death for Jesus. And it would be also, it will also bring suffering to those closest to him. Because of the cross, Jesus' mother would watch in agony as her son was publicly humiliated, tortured, and murdered. Jesus, Jesus' auntie and close friends would witness his executing death. His disciples would be scattered in terror and confusion and what would be the longest, darkest night in their lives because of Jesus' obedience. There would be also a cross for each of his disciples. Obedience to your Lord, to your Lord's command, will affect others around you. Luke 
<clears throat> Stop to 14. And verse 26 says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his mother, his father and mother, in the sense of differences to relatives I regarded for them in compassion with the with the attitude toward God. If if your children, your husbands, your wives, anybody means more to you than Jesus, you can't be his disciples. So don't refuse to obey what you know God is asking because you fear the cost to your family. Beware, <clears throat> lest you seek to prevent those you love from taking up the cross God has for them. Don't ever try to protect those you love by disobeying God. The cost of your obedience is always greater. Amen. Rather, look to Jesus, your model, and see what it cost those around him for him to be obedient to his Father. And so is the readings from the books of the Lord. The book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Matthew, chapter 5. Verse 3 through, five, through 12. And here in the book of John, the 19th chapter. And the verse is 25. Now let's go to our featured study. Found in the book of Ruth, found in the book of Ruth, the fourth chapter. The Bible, the Word of God says, Ruth, beginning at verse number four, All right here. There we go. There we go. All right. The Bible, the Word of God says, I thought it I thought I should inform you by in the presence of those seated here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you want to redeem do so but if you do not if you do not want to redeem it tell me so I, that i will know because there isn't anyone other than you to redeem it and i next after you and i want to Redeem it, he answered. Then Boaz, then Boaz said, then Boaz said to, to, to him, On the day you buy the land from Naomi, you will also acquire the, uh, acquire Ruth, the Mobitess, the wife of the deceased man, to perpetuate the man's name on his property. The Redeemer replied, I can't redeem it myself, or I, would, I will ruin my own inheritance. Take 
my, re my right of redemption because I can't redeem it. At an earlier period in Israel, a man removed his sandals and gave it to the other party in order to build my, make, to make any matter legally binding concerning the right of redemption or the exchange of property. This was the method of legally binding a transaction in Israel. Boaz, Boaz asked the kinsman redeemer, are you going to, are you going to redeem, are you going to re redeem the property? Be Boaz had made this statement. He heard the dreadful words that he had hoped uh, he would not hear. The kinsman agree to redeem the property. His quick response suggests that he was eager to secure the land, feeling that it would be a good investment. And perhaps increase his holding an estate rather significantly. Of course, being a large property owner would enhance his reputation, his position in Bethlehem, as well as increase his profits each year. Throughout Israel's history, willingness was uh, a man, was an absolute essential for the needy to be redeemed. The kinsman redeemer, the kinsman redeemer had to be willing to rescue his relative uh, from the trouble they were in. So it is with our Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ's willingness to go to the cross to, to die for a wretch like me. He was willing. He did it voluntarily. Because, amen, he said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd layeth down his life for the sheep. My brothers and sisters, Titus, Paul, writing to his son, in the Gospel Titus, he says in Titus 2, 14, he says, who gave himself, that is Jesus, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous, of good works. 
the Hebrew writer, puts it this way. In Hebrews chapter 9, beginning at verse number 9, verse number 12, he says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered into, in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. If, for if, the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, to purge your conscience from dead works to serve the, the living God. My brothers and, and sisters, we know that God is able. We know that God can, he can do all things. He paid the price. Jesus paid the price. He says to us, through the word, the Holy Spirit, move the, the Apostle Paul to declare, you have been bought with a cross, with a price. There was a price on your head. There, there was a reward for your head. And so Jesus, Jesus paid the ransom that uh, a man that was able to free you from your sin. And he was better. His sacrifice was better than the sacrifice of the uh, Old Testament bulls and bullocks. I come to tell you, G, the Hebrew writer again said, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Christ, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. To do thy will, O God. Above when he said sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hast pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second, by the which we will, uh, we will, by which will we are, sacri are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering uh, oftentimes the same sacrifice which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins for, forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made footstool, his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. 
Hebrews chapter 10, verse 6 through 14. My brothers and sisters, then Boaz said, one on the day you buy the land, I'm back in the book of Ruth chapter 4 and verse 5, on the day you buy the land from Naomi, you will also acquire Ruth, the Moabitess, the wife of the deceased man, to perpetuate the man's name on his property. The Redeemer replied, I can't redeem it myself, or I will ruin my own inheritance, take my right of redemption because I can't redeem it. At an earlier period in Israel, a man removed his sandal and gave it to the other party in order to make any matter legally binding concerning the right of redemption or the exchange of property. This was the method uh, often uh, the legally binding uh, in the nation of Israel. The Redeemer had now have to have the resources to redeem the needy. As soon as the other kinsmen agreed to redeem the property, Boaz reminded the kinsmen of the legal condition. He had to marry the widow Ruth. And then Boaz added the reason so that Ruth could have children and carry on her husband's name, keeping the land in the family. Hearing this, the other kinsman redeemer had to rethink that issue. Yeah, he, 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 he looked at the financial uh, and uh, uh, benefit. And of course, he looked at how this would make him look, uh, amen, in the, in the town of Bethlehem, of Judea. I come to tell you, he had to think about this thing. He did not have the resources to call on taking in an, uh, another woman to be his wife. He was uh, he he wanted them uh, to know I I can't accept this. This is too much. And so here, he backed off. He would not be able to redeem the land and take uh, uh, added expenses of another family uh, and, their, and their future. Let me, let me stop right here. Let me, let me be clear. One of the quickest ways to bring yourself your family, and those that are dependent upon you into poverty is for you to take on more than God has given you to take on. Amen, Walls and Alexis Lang. How many homes have been torn to pieces because the man not only has a wife and, a, and children 
over here, but he also has a, a woman on the side. I come to tell you, uh, amen, uh, God, God knows what you can bear. He knows what you can do. Because I want you to know there is absolutely no way on the income you have to support your family that you have then take on another, buy the rights to the land and you got to take on another wife and give her some children. I know that these are some troublesome times. But let me tell you something. Men, you take care of your home. And don't ever try to take, take on more than one home. Because that's what God gave you. Sisters, you need to stay at home. With the, you can't afford to take your money out of your home and put it over here. I want y'all to know. God has made it possible. God has made it possible for you to take care, but don't try to do more than, he, than you can. And so the kinsman redeemer, he takes off his sandal as the custom were in the presence of the elders of Israel of their town. And he said, I can't redeem it. Here's my my sandal. I give you the right uh, to redeem them, my brothers and sisters. You, What you need to do is see God moving in this whole, in this whole plan. Because Boaz was going to be the lineage that keeps that that keeps alive that God keeps alive for the birth of Jesus. While Boaz would uh, and Ruth would uh, would have would have Obed and O. Obed would uh, would uh, bear Jesse, and Jesse would bear uh, David, his son David, who would be king in Israel. I want you to know God's plans are already moving in your life because God wants to produce something in the future. And what we have to do is get under God's wings and fly on the wings of an eagle. Praise be unto God. God bless you. We'll open up the prayer line. If you would like to have prayer, you give us a prayer call. We had on yesterday um, Sister Anna Gilbert asked for prayer for her health and her workplace and co-workers. Gail Krim, uh, Gr uh, uh, Graham and Ruby Knox and her grandchildren and pray for Brother Todd and their sons. Pray with them. Um, and Brother Wayne Shimwell is asking us to pray um, for the family of uh, Angela Gibbs who passed away last week and our prayers are with them. He is also sending up prayers for his wife as she works uh, with those um, uh, who are taking care of the sick in nursing home. 
She her, she is the, the doctor that has responsibility. Um, Sister Dorothy Knight asked in prayer for her daughter, Crystal uh, Knight, and her cousin, Alexis Hughes. Hughes, that is sick. Sister Marion Mason continued prayer for her, their sister, Glenda uh, Smith, and thanks for praying for the family of Tim Griffin, who is out of the hospital now, and also for his family. Sister Linda Bird, I uh, pray for her and her family, and please add my name back on the list of support uh, uh, morning meditation. Uh, I support on a monthly basis. Amen. I thought I uh, called that if I didn't. Please, please know that I, I am well aware, and I thank you, and I want to urge many others to please support this ministry. Um, without your support, we couldn't be on every day. Uh, amen. We couldn't be on every day. So if you need prayer, you you give us a call. 571-1240. We'll pray with you. And we'll pray for you. That our God may strengthen your life. And the life of those around you. Sister Diane Jordan. Want us to pray for her family. And all the sick. Sister Beverly Blintson, prayer for traveling grace for her, um, her sisters, Kim. We want to pray also, Brother Larry Denny is asking for prayer for Lisa Denny, Roger Denny, Gwen Denny. Larry A. Denny, Michael Denny, um, Na Naomi Kavana, Robert Moss, Raymond Moss, J. Timothy Hamilton, Linda Hamilton, and the rest of uh, my family. Praise be unto God. What a, what a God that we have who is able who's able to do more abundantly than we are able to ask of him. My brothers and sisters, God is able. Sister Rita and Brother David Kamishi, pray for President Trump and all government leaders to guide us in Christ for his glory. In Jesus' name. You know, those of us that are true to God's word, we have opportunity that, uh, to worship and praise him without the threat of government interference. God has opened up the door. We have an attorney general in Washington and here in uh, Kentucky, David Cameron, a young man that is destined to allow God to use him. And we ought to be thankful that we have a person in the Attorney General's office who stands for the legality of our ability to worship God without the interference of anyone. God 
I believe, has uh, uh, rose him up in our generation. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we call upon your great name. We ask now that you would be with us, Father. Be with all of these whose names I've called up before you. Would you put them in the book of remembrance? And, oh God, strengthen them. Help them. I thank you. We pray for our country, our president, our governor, our mayor, and all of those that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. For this is pleasing to God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. My time is up for today. I've enjoyed being with you. Look forward to being with you again on tomorrow. Until then, know this. Our God loves you, and so do I.